Did you know that this braking system that adds 10% more driving range to your electric vehicle and extends the life of your hydraulic brakes by over 50%? Today I'm talking about the regenerative braking system. We'll see how it works and how it compares with traditional brakes in a conventional combustion engine car. We'll also break some myths about the good, the bad, and the ugly on regenerative brakes. Right now, all electric and hybrid cars in the U.S. use regenerative braking, or regen for short. To really appreciate regenerative braking in an EV, it helps to see how it differs from traditional brakes in a regular combustion engine car. When you press the brake pedal in a conventional car, the pressure of hydraulic fluid squeezes the brake pads tightly against the rotors, which are metal discs behind the wheels. The resulting friction slows down the car. The friction converts kinetic energy into thermal energy. In other words, heat. That's why brakes get hot. But here's the thing, the heat dissipates. And that's why in a gas-powered car, you lose all that kinetic energy. If you're wondering what's the worth of kinetic energy you're losing, and what's the big deal anyway, let's put it in perspective. Just recall the last time you rode a bicycle. When you get on your bike from a standstill, you have to pedal to get the bike moving, and you gain momentum. But each time you brake and come to a full stop, you waste all that momentum you've already gained. That's why you have to start from scratch all over again to get the bike moving again with a lot more energy to expend. But imagine every time you brake and come to a standstill. You could somehow capture and store all that momentum you gained, and then reuse that energy you get it going again. And that's where the beauty of the regenerative brake comes in. Regenerative braking captures the kinetic energy that otherwise goes to waste and converts it into energy. The recaptured energy goes back into your EV's battery and it helps add driving range to your electric vehicle. Here's how it works. With an EV, the battery produces juice to the electric motor, which drives the wheels. But when you remove your foot off the throttle to decelerate, the electric motor disengages and stops providing power to the wheels. Instead, it starts running backwards. Now your car doesn't run backwards, just the motor. Of course, the car doesn't drive in reverse, since the motor disengaged from the wheels. Instead, when the motor runs in reverse, it actually operates like a generator. It captures the kinetic energy from the wheels as they slow down. Then it converts that into electricity which gets stored in the battery. I'm talking about adding free extra juice to the battery. Later, when you press the accelerator again, the electricity gets sent back to the electric motor to move the wheels forward again. Now, don't get me wrong, it's important to know how things work, but it's also important to know what something feels like when you're using it. Many new EV owners are surprised to learn that regenerative braking in an EV feels different than braking in a conventional car. In a conventional car, when you take your foot off the accelerator, you feel a smooth and slow deceleration. But in an EV with regenerative braking, as soon as you remove your foot off the accelerator pedal, you'll feel a sudden decrease in speed. To be clear, it's not like you're slamming on the brakes right then and there, but the deceleration does feel more prominent when you take your foot off the accelerator. In some EVs, like a Tesla for example, it can feel a bit more intense, sudden than you might expect. So just be prepared for that and just let you know that it takes a while to get used to. But now, let's look at the good, the bad, and the ugly of regenerative braking. First of all, here's a question. If traditional brakes lose kinetic energy, then how much of that energy can regenerative brakes recapture? Well, it depends on the vehicle and the battery, and also whether you're driving in a city or on a highway. But in general, larger, heavier EVs that move quickly build up a lot more kinetic energy. So obviously, you can see the best energy saving is in those EVs. EVs that stop and start a lot can also make significant savings. All in all, some of the newest regenerative braking systems, believe it or not, capture up to 70% of the energy. Bear in mind though that 70% doesn't mean that regenerative braking will give you a 70% more range. Rather, it just means that 70% of the kinetic energy that you'll otherwise lose during braking can be converted and reused for acceleration later on. Depending on how much you use your battery electric car, regenerative braking can add hundreds of miles to the charging gauge, and that can come to some sizable savings and extra money in your pocket. This also means you spend less time to charge your car. But if you have a hybrid car, well, hybrids still have internal combustion engines under the hood. But since regenerative braking helps you top off your battery pack, you can rely less on your combustion engine and save money on gasoline that way too. Needless to say, regenerative braking is also environmentally friendly. That's because it self-generates energy instead of relying on fossil fuels or green energy. 
here's something many don't know. All EVs have regenerative braking systems, but EVs also come with conventional hydraulic brakes by default. But because regenerative braking does most of the work on slowing down the EV, some car experts theorize that your conventional brake pads and rotors get used much less frequently. With less wear and tear, supposedly they can get a longer life, and you can save on maintenance costs on hydraulic brakes. In fact, Elon Musk is so confident in regenerative braking that he said one day Tesla's semis would have brake pads that literally will last forever because of regenerative braking. Now that's one line of thought, but not everybody agrees about the speed of wear and tear of your brakes. There are some who say that since you're using your hydraulic brakes less, you will get quicker buildup of rust and contaminants. Not only does that affect the disc friction surface, but it also impacts on the pad mounting and the caliper piston and slider pins. Because of the corrosion and degradation, the brake pads might not be able to fully retract from the disc, and that in turn speeds up uneven wear and tear. Or another possibility is, depending on where the corrosion is located, the brake pads might not contact the disc properly, and that means the disc friction face will not get cleaned off completely. Regardless, this particular topic is still debatable. I'm sure over time we'll get more data from car makers and mechanics, and we'll see much more clear if this is fact or myth. But let's take a look at confirmed disadvantages of regenerative braking. Because regenerative braking isn't all sunshine. For example, regenerative braking can be limited or even completely unavailable in certain conditions. For example, let's say your battery is fully charged. In that case, there's nowhere for the recaptured energy to be stored. Or let's say the weather's cold. Cold weather means cold battery, and that means limited regenerative braking capabilities. But that said, as you start driving the vehicle and the temperature starts to rise, the regenerative braking power will start increasing. Regenerative Braking also largely depends on the speed you travel. If you're traveling too slow, regenerative braking will either be limited or maybe not even work at all. So it's pointless in that case. Another problem with regenerative braking has to do with safety issues. If you're driving on an icy road in the middle of January and regenerative braking kicks in, it could cause your vehicle to slide on the ice, which is the last thing you want. Personally, I recommend disabling regenerative braking before you get on the road if you see snow or ice outside or around your car. It's always better to be safe than sorry. In fact, even on the test the website, there's a warning that in snowy or icing conditions, the Model S might experience loss of traction when using regenerative braking. Speaking of snowy and icy conditions, if you already have your winter tires on, also be aware that winter tires may actually reduce regenerative braking. But usually that's temporary because EV systems constantly recalibrate. So the feel of the vehicle should return back to normal after a few miles. So how can you tell if your regenerative braking system has been reduced? Well, let's say you have a Tesla. There are several ways. If it's cold outside and on the screen you see a snowflake icon and a blue bar on the battery icon, this means that part of the energy in the battery isn't available for use until it warms up. What you can do is preheat the battery using the mobile Tesla app. Turn on the climate control 10 to 14 minutes and this should make the snowflake and blue bar disappear and you can drive off. Another telltale sign is to look at the Tesla energy bar. You can find the energy bar at the top left side of the touch screen. The more dots you see on the left side of the line, the less regenerative braking you have. Tesla also added a new indicator light, which helps you understand when regenerative braking has been temporarily reduced. It's located next to the headlight and the high beam indicators. You can click on the symbol to see more information. And if you're still not sure if your regenerative braking is reduced, there's also a warning on the touchscreen that says limited deceleration when accelerator is released. That means that you shouldn't rely on regenerative braking to slow down. Instead, you should use the regular brake pedal. But now, there are ways you can optimize regenerative braking to the maximum. Here are a few tips. First of all, don't speed. Speeding drains more energy from your EV battery as it is. But on top of that, when you're speeding and then you need to slow down, you end up using the brake pedal more often. Another tip is to coast. When you coast, you let the regenerative brakes add as much energy as possible. Go downhill whenever you can and keep your foot off the accelerator. Also, on colder days, try to precondition your vehicle before you get on the road. This warms up the batteries and makes it possible for the maximum amount of energy to be captured during regenerative braking. Regenerative braking isn't a new concept. The earliest known use of regenerative braking was used by the Sprague Electric Railway and Motor Company back in 1886. And did you know that buses have been experimenting with mechanical forms of regenerative braking using hydraulics and flywheels? And I'm talking about since the 1940s and 50s. That's when the idea was first introduced by Swiss company or Lecon Machine Works with its gyro buses. In 1967, the American Motor Company or AMC created regenerative braking for its concept electric car called the AMC Amatron. But it was Toyota who became the first car maker to use regenerative braking. They accomplished this starting with the Prius model cars mass produced in 1997.
Back in 2008, Tesla used regenerative braking in a Roadster. The following year, the world saw regenerative braking implemented in Formula One. It was called the KERS, or Kinetic Energy Recovery System. Pretty much, it gave a horsepower boost that was so powerful that it actually was banned for a season before being regulated a year later. But now, you tell me, what do you think about regenerative braking? Do you think the pros outweigh the cons, or vice versa? Please share by commenting below. If you like this video, please like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for your support.